Greetings, YouTube. The Doctor is in. Dr. Urias Papers here coming at you with another commentary on Dungeons and & Dragons. And today on the Doctor Spell Prognosis, we are talking about the spell Passwall. We're giving this spell a B, but first, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a question or comment, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. All right, so Passwall is a 5th level spell that is usable by Wizards. Circle of the Land Mountain Druids. Okay, I can accept that one. That one I can accept. Armor Artificers. That one's a little bit harder for me to swallow. I'm not sure why they just didn't give this to ar Artificers in general. And Moon Domain Clerics. Okay, I think that is a page out of Lord of the Rings and Moon Doors. So, okay, I can see that one. So the only one that doesn't really make any sense to me is the Armor Artificer. But, okay. We, we'll, we'll take it. That's who can use it. It takes one action, has a range of 30 feet. It is a verbal, somatic, and material component, which is a pinch of sesame seeds or a arcane focus. So it's worthless and nobody cares. It has a duration of one hour. So a passage appears at a point of your choice, as you can see, on a wooden plaster or stone surface, such as a wall, a ceiling, or a floor within range, and it lasts for the duration. So, it's not concentration, and this spell lasts for the duration. Nothing in here says that you can dismiss the spell. So, once you've cast it, it lasts until the hour is up. So, you choose the opening's dimensions, which can be up to 5 feet wide, 8 feet tall, and 20 feet deep. The passage creates no instability in a structure surrounding it. So you can't all of a sudden open up a passage in a rock wall and it's going to cause it to collapse because of instability. So it just opens a passage up. That is those dimensions. When the opening disappears, that is when the hour is up, any creature or objects still in the passage created by the spell are safely ejected to an unoccupied space nearest to the surface on which you cast the spell. So that is a wall or something like that. Now I want to I want to check one thing out here under spell casting because I know you all out in internet land are going to take offense at something I just said which was you can't dismiss this spell because it doesn't say you can't dismiss it. So um, it is not a concentration spell so casting it um, it has a casting time. Uh, if your concentration is broken, the spell fails. So certain spells require more time to cast. You cast a spell using a casting time longer than a single action or reaction. You must spend your action each turn casting the spell. Okay, that's just about longer casting times. Components. Mm, duration. This is not a concentration. Um, a spell's duration is the length of time the spell persists. Some spells specify that their effects last until the spells are dispelled or destroyed. This is not one of those, but it says it does last until the end of the spell. And it is not a concentration spell, so none of this stuff applies. Don't Nothing in targets, nothing in that, combining magical effects. Nope, I don't see anything. So that means that this spell lasts until the hour is up. And you cannot get rid of it. All right, so what are the good uses for this spell? We're giving this a B, so obviously it has some uses. Well, um, so let's say your party comes up to a door, and you either can't detect traps on the door, you fail to detect traps on the door, even though you may not know that you failed, but you don't feel comfortable about the door. You do detect a trap on the door, but you don't have a way of getting around it. Well, and there's a and the door is set in a stone or wooden wall. Guess what? Now you have a way of getting around it. Pass wall. There you go. Just go to the side, hit, place the pass wall on it. It can go up to 20 feet deep. If the if the wall is only a foot deep, then it doesn't really matter. You can make it 20 feet deep and it's just going to go into the room. It's not going to do anything and you're going to go in the room and you're going to bypass that trap door. So, uh, you can go up because the spell says that you can put the, the pass wall on a wall, a ceiling, or a floor. So a ceiling is up. 
So let's say you want to go to a level up. Say like you are approaching in the basement of something and you want to avoid everything in the basement of whatever structure you're in and you want to go up. Well, pass wall. There you go. Done. You're going up. Let's say you want to go down. Say you're in a dungeon or you've come into a castle and you need to get in the basement of the castle or you need to get to the next level and you want to avoid everything in the current level you're in. Pass wall. You're going down. Now, here's an interesting thing that, that I think is very doable. If it's five feet wide, eight feet long, that is a medium creature square. And if you were to create a pass wall in their square, it's 20 feet deep. There is no saving throw. They fall 20 feet, and if they don't have a way to get out, then they're going to be stuck, and your party can massacre them with ranged weapons from the top of that now 20 foot deep pit so that is a pretty good thing there's no saving throw for that they just fall because there's nothing in the spell that says they got saved now your dm may want to say oh, i want to give them a chance so you're going to have to talk that out with your dm uh, one way that you can use this because it is a one action spell you could use this in combat if you need to get away saying you're being chased and you need to get away you need to create an opening to get to a certain place pass wall can do that as well just keep in mind that at whatever's chasing you or whatever is threatening you can go through that too but um if you make it small enough they may not be able to get in because you can make it up to two feet wide eight feet tall and 20 feet deep it doesn't have to be five feet wide eight feet tall and 20 feet deep and lastly um i want to talk about the use of a sensor and particularly through the spell Clairvoyance. So we've talked about this spell before. I will put a link uh, at the end of this video to this particular video. This is a great spell. It allows you to see things that you can't normally see. So if you create an invisible sensor within range to a location familiar to you or in an obvious location that is unfamiliar to you, such, such as behind a door, around a corner, in a grove of trees, etc., and so you can do this up to a mile. So if you're, at a, if you're at a place where there is a door, there's obviously a room on the other side of the door. So you can place the sensor in that space on the other side of the door to look around. And then you go, okay, I don't really want to go through this door. So I'm going to put the pass wall here because I know that it goes into this room because I saw it with the sensor. So great use of this spell combined with pass wall. All right, that's what I got for everybody today. I hope everybody enjoyed, and I will catch everybody later.